from the TCRO. We are your hosts, Roxanne Gallo and Zachary Hines. It's spooky season, Rox. Woo! Boom. Nothing can uh, shoo away all of my fears like some really great Tampa talent. Yes. Woo! We got a shredder this episode, y'all. I'm really excited. So uh, let's get started. Here we go. Stay I'm not gonna exactly go. where you are. I'm holding my, I'm holding the laptop. Oh, this is good. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is the best. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. oh, 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 okay. oh, oh. All right, let's go for it. Hey, TTRLers, welcome. We are joined today by regional band expert timing, or at least two thirds of them. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, uh, I don't know what should I say. Uh, we're a band unfortunately on a break now like every other band um but we did just release a an ep um you know not so expert timing how long have you been a band um 2016 yeah. we've been a band we started because katrina and i were in a different band i was the drummer katrina played bass it was katrina's first band yes and um the the singer of that band was moving so we... Like we had just started, like, you know, I had been wanting to play bass for a long time and I finally got up the courage. I'm like, I'm doing this. And he had never learned how to play drums. So he learned how to play drums. So I wasn't the only one doing something new because it's intimidating as heck when you're like trying to get in and everyone else knows what they're doing. Um, so we got like momentum and it was really fun. And then he moved. So Jeff and I were like, well, I guess we, we know, got offered gonna... a cool show and we didn't want to say no to it. Yeah, so we, so we started this band. <laughs> we wrote five songs and to play the show. Yeah. And then we're like, hey, this is really fun. Let's keep going. It was truly like a sink or swim. I had never sang before. Oh, that's right. So that's that's also a little tidbit that's uh, terrifying. I had never sang before. So that was a whole new aspect. And that was my first show singing. But I was is... so much better at guitar than drums. <laughs> yeah. So it felt really nice to be able to actually play my instrument. <laughs> that's right that's right it was it, so it was fun and I mean I it, it's good though that it's like sparked like now this band like Jeff and I like have learned so much like getting to and I've learned a lot about songwriting and now we really collaborate so so much on all of it it's it's been it's been really neat it's been a cool journey and like a whole different part of our relationship that you know I didn't expect we had been together a long time. We were together for a decade before I ever played an instrument or sang in front of him. Like, awful. Like karaoke's good. Like, karaoke worst was my worst nightmare. <laughs> like, if anyone would pressure me to do that, I'd probably cry. Like, it was that bad. So, but it, it was a, a true fear to get over, which is, you know, kind of why I really forced myself to do it. And Jeff... I was really shocked that Katrina wanted to sing in a band. <laughs> I was... You were very... You had gentle pressure of just like, you can do it. And then, you know, I had a few breakdowns about it, but now I, I truly enjoy it. Like I really enjoy singing. So glad I did it. <laughs> we call ourselves bubble grunge a lot. Um, because people actually have a really hard time. I love anytime someone does a review, they have a hard time putting us in a category. Sometimes it's punk, sometimes it's indie, sometimes it's grunge, sometimes it's emo. And I, I like that because I feel like we don't quite fit anywhere. It's just unique. But um, yeah, I guess we're we're bubble grunge and like poppy choruses you can sing and dance to, but you know, usually hidden with some like darker lyrical content, which we kind of like doing that where it's like really happy music, but if you look into it, it's a little darker. <laughs>
time, our creative loafing preview with Mr. Ray Roa. Hey, Ray. Hello. So here we are again with the Strat Center on TTRL, and I'm going to rack my brain. <laughs> and we're going to talk about some stories going out on newsstands October 15th. A uh, longtime contributor, Justin Garcia, is a, um, he's a musical artist. Uh, but he's also a great reporter. He has two stories in the book this week. One of them we'll start with, we're recording this on uh, Columbus Day, which there's a push to make it Indigenous Peoples Day. And Justin was at a, a protest yesterday on Bayshore. Um, Dave Decker was there taking photos. Um, depending on who you ask, it's a really complicated issue. Um, but Justin does a really good job of kind of breaking it down. Justin wrote a story in July. This is a natural follow-up. Justin was also... Um, out in DeSoto Skate Park, I think Roxanne's is skating a roller rink stand. He was out hanging out with the gay commie skate crew of Tampa Bay, which I had no clue um, existed. Um, but, wait, wait, wait. Uh, we need to spell this out. Wait, gay? So it's Tampa Bay's gay commie skate crew, or the GCSC, and they're going to celebrate Halloween at DeSoto Skate Park. I'll just leave this sentence at this. The crew is hell on four wheels carving back and forth across the concrete, dressed as the stuff of nightmares and dreams. Tank girl, Cupid, a pro wrestler, vampires and witches glide through the park. So uh, there's twerking in the story, there's roller skating, um, there's Halloween, a lot of cool twerking stuff. Twerking gay communist skaters dressed up in Halloween costumes. Sounds like heaven. Genius. <laughs> Do you have a Halloween costume this year? I don't. Yet, but I think my son is going to dress up as me. TikTok. <laughs> I know. So we'll see. And Halloween's on a Saturday. I don't know. It's like you just don't know what's going to happen with Halloween. So, and this is my first Halloween with a kid. So uh, we're going to figure it out. I, I need a good family costume. Real, real yeah. Nice and wholesome, right? But I will report back. <laughs> Hello, TTRLers. Welcome. We are joined today by local musician, guitar goddess, Stephanie Perez. <laughs> Welcome, Stephanie. How are you? I'm very well. Very glad to be here. I originally picked up the guitar around the age of four years old, um, but didn't initially start getting incredibly disciplined or serious, really, or really set my sights until I was around like six or seven, very young. So um, I, I always grew up with a, um, a background of listening to pop music and rock and blues, um, salsa, jazz, just anything that you could pretty much name. I mean, I, I've grown up with it around my household. Like, I remember being very young and watching Journey, you know, when I was very young on, on, you know, on TV, just reruns of, of, you know, their concert specials and seeing Neil Sean just like playing guitar and doing guitar solos, like these insane guitar solos, you know, with this cherry red Les Paul. I remember watching that when I was like six or seven years old, very young. And that was, oh. a, that already kind of just it kept the, the snowball rolling, you know. And uh, when I was eight years old was when I discovered my love for Guns N' Roses, believe it or not. You know, this, this type of style of music, you know, like hard rock and heavy metal to me was like giving a voice to the misfits, like giving a voice to really the outcasts and, and you know, the, the socially awkward <laughs> weirdos like me that really love having a voice and to not being afraid of any sort of aspect of who you are as a person. I do feel like that there needs to be more diversity because of the fact that now more women, more than ever, even more women of color more than ever, have expressed themselves through rock and roll. Music really is developed to be a collective consciousness. It, it is a tool for communication, not just to make you feel, but to also make you you know, understand and empathize and live, you know, it's also, it's also decorating time, if you think about it, it's kind of like, you know what I mean, like de decorating the moment of, you know, um, either you being with a group of friends or you being alone somewhere. No matter what it is, you have a song for it. I am proud of the rendition that I did of Eddie Van Halen's Eruption because this video was already taken a day after he passed away. 
because if it really wasn't for Eddie Van Halen, I don't really think that any of my other heroes or idols would honestly be here if it wasn't for him. And time is really changing. And I feel like that me being a part of a, of a different generation as opposed to when Eddie came out is also a very beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful thing to see, you know, either up and comers or, or musicians who are very young, who have played for a certain amount of years that show respect and he's one of my heroes. So I hope that others really enjoy that and really appreciate just uh, the thought, the thought, the sentiment and the ability in the rendition. 